Hello, hello, hello. I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. We are currently in our fifth, sixth week into lockdown. So I hope you are safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, not too long ago, I took to Instagram and I asked you guys for video suggestions and video ideas. Some of these ideas, like guys, you should consider being content creators yourself. Thank you so much for all the ideas. I got a lot of responses that told me that I should try a range of different instant noodles. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna spend 24 hours eating instant noodles for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and we are going to make these instant noodles a little bit fancy and put our own stamp on it. And before we start, I wanna say a huge thank you to our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Uh, I've been working with them for a long time now, but if you've never heard of them before, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on a variety of different topics, but more on them a little bit later because we are gonna dive right into our first instant noodles for today. We are gonna be having this pho, this beef pho from Mama. So without further ado, this is what I'm adding to it. So to this bowl of pho, I'm adding mint, chili, bean sprouts, beef pieces, and coriander. This is what's on the inside of the packet, just instant noodles and MSG flavoring packets. Okay, we are starting off our breakfast with the beef pho from a brand called Mama. And this is actually a Thai instant noodle brand. And I couldn't find a Vietnamese one, but if you do know of any, please let me know because I'd love to try it. Pho just brings back memories of when I was in Ho Chi Minh City and the pho that I had when I was there. It was absolutely incredible. It's one of the places that I definitely do want to go back again when we can travel. But you know, this is what we have essentially inside this packet, there's just noodles and they have a seasoning packet and also seasoning oil. So if you didn't add anything additional, it would just be the soup base and the noodles. Anyway, before we start, I do want to taste the broth or the flavoring water. It tastes okay. It doesn't compare to the broth that you get in furs that you get at restaurants. These noodles are still quite chewy, slightly firm. It's a little bit, um, oily as well, but overall, these noodles are not bad. I like the noodles more than the the flavor of the soup. And I think once you add the condiments, you know, you've got the hoisin sauce, the sriracha, beef slices, some mint leaves, bean sprouts, etc., etc. It does elevate these bowl of noodles a little bit more to make it more similar to what you would get in restaurants. If you do try it, let me know what you think. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of these noodles, but breakfast isn't over just yet. I still have some beef slices left over, and I've got another instant noodles that's still kind of in the beef theme, so. Okay, so for this next one, we are having this tomato beef noodle. On the picture, as you can see, they have beef, corn, and beans. I highly doubt that this is gonna be actually in the photo. This is also made by Heidi Lau, which is like a very popular hot pot location, they also do soup bases. So inside this little package, we have the dehydrated vegetables, we have the beef pouch, we have the tomato flavoring, and we also have the noodles itself. So let's cook it up and let's see what it tastes like. The noodles is actually glass noodles. I like glass noodles a lot, especially in the shrimp pot. Anyway, let's try this right now. This is actually not bad at all. I didn't think much of it when I, when I got it, but it's actually pretty good. The corn, I mean, it still tastes like corn, but you can tell that it's, there's something different. And the soup base tastes a little bit like the Hardy Lao tomato hot pot soup base. Let me try this like little tiny piece of beef. It tastes like one of those packaged meats that you can get at shops as a snack that you know has so much sodium to preserve it. That's what this beef tastes like. Like you don't mind it when you eat it, but you know that you're gonna be really thirsty later on. So this is this is actually surprisingly not bad. And if I had to compare this with the pho that I had just then, excluding all the ingredients that I added to it, I actually like this one more than the mama pho. Okay, so I am going to finish the rest of this and I'll check back in with you very, very shortly. 
and we are back now for a snack so not too long ago i got a package from etison and when i opened it there were a whole bunch of instant noodle packages which i thought was quite fitting for today's video and what we're going to be trying right now is something called a super meat now i've never had this before but i assume it's quite similar to migoren which is basically indonesian style fried noodles so right now i am just stir frying an egg and i've also sliced up some cucumber some tomatoes and chopped up some spring onions and we'll add that to the noodles in just a bit but at the moment we are just going to concentrate on frying this egg i think i should have just fried the egg last like top it onto the noodles damn it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to boil up some water and cook up these noodles we also got to mix up some sauces as well okay so in the package instructions it says you need to pour all the different sauces and then mix it but i don't think you need to do that i think you can just put it directly on the noodles so if you're going to do this yourself i don't think you need to mix it in the bowl first okay so now i'm just going to pour the noodles into this and then add the <laughs> whatever's become of my sauce mixture into the noodles and go from there. So here we have our very own super meat. I've added a fried egg, I've added some tomatoes and cucumbers on it, and I've also sort of stir fried in the chopped spring onions as well. It smells pretty amazing. This is what it looks like. I can't wait to dig in. These noodles are not bad. These noodles aren't bad at all. I think it would taste even better with like some chicken, which I didn't add. But the noodles are very chewy. It's got a very good bite to it. And the combination of the seasoning, I know a lot of it is MSG, <laughs> but, it, but it still tastes pretty good. All right, like I mentioned at the very beginning, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And I've been watching a Skillshare class on making a living as an artist, strategies for crafting your creative business. Now, I don't know if I can call myself an artist, but I did find a number of takeaways in this class to be quite useful. At the very beginning, when I first started YouTube, this was a passion project. For me. And when I decided that I wanted to continue with it and I didn't want to stop making videos on my channel, I had to really look into a lot more detail of my numbers and figure out how I can make this sustainable. Now the thing with YouTube is there are a lot of different niches that you can make content on, but the one that I'm interested in and the one that I'm passionate about is food and travel. And the thing about this niche is every single video that I make, I have to spend money. It's not like I can sit in front of a camera and just talk. And if I can be completely honest, sometimes I get a mini heart attack looking at the amount of money I've spent trying to make a video idea happen and the amount of money I've spent on software subscription services compared to the amount of money that these videos bring in. And I just wanna say, if you've ever watched an ad on my video, thank you. If you've ever liked one of my videos or commented on my videos, thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. As a random fact, one of the most money I've spent on a video that I made in 2021 was over $700. Have I made that back? No, <laughs> but I did have a lot of fun making it and I'll let you guess which video you think that is. So yeah, I do think that it's quite interesting and helpful for me to understand what strategies other people have for crafting their creative business. There are a lot of other classes on Skillshare like photography, graphic design, entrepreneurship, productivity. So if you're interested and you wanna check it out, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of you guys who click on the link in my description, a month free premium membership to the platform. So you can use this trial to try out as many classes, check out as many classes as you want for free. It is now time for lunch. Yes, all we do is eat on this channel and we are having Luxa. Now this is from a brand called Primer Taste and apparently the Luxa flavor is one of their original first flavors. So I have high expectations for this. I also had Luxa when I was in Singapore, loved it. And when I used to work in the city, there was a place that I went to very often for Luxa, a place called Malay Chinese. I just, 
I actually really miss that place. Anyway, this is apparently a quick and proper meal in seven minutes. It uses premium paste, not seasoning powder, and uh, it's a robust, authentic taste. So we are, of course, going to spruce this up a little bit. We're gonna be adding some prawns, some chicken, some tofu puffs, some bean sprouts, make it as similar to a laksa you can get at a restaurant as possible. So as our noodles are cooking, I am going to fry up some prawns. I'm gonna cook up some chicken so that it's ready when you know the, the noodles are ready as well. So I'm just cooking up three pieces of prawns, three pieces of chicken, and at the same time, I'm boiling up an egg. Okay, so my egg is done, my prawns and my chicken are pretty much done as well. We can now start with adding laksa paste and the laksa pre-mix into 500 mils of water before mixing it and then bringing it to boil. <clears throat> okay, we're about to add our ingredients into the broth. Before I show you the eggs, I just want to say please don't judge. I underestimated how much time it took to boil it because I didn't time it, so yeah. All right, our laksa is now done. It doesn't look like the picture, but it smells pretty good and it looks pretty good as well. So the first thing that I really want to try is their laksa broth. It's quite thick in consistency and I can smell the coconut flavors. This broth is actually quite nice. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, but it's not overwhelming. And it's sort of counteracted by the creaminess of the coconut. And I can taste like the prawn flavors in the broth as well. Okay, let me try the noodles as well. These noodles are quite thick. It's still got a nice chewy texture to it. I let it sit in the broth for a little bit longer because I was taking photos. But if you were to eat this right away, I think it would taste even better. I like the noodles and I love the broth. Yeah, of everything that I've had today, this is the top of the list. So yeah, if you do try this, let me know how you find it. Let me know what else you add to it. I just miss having laksa so much, especially because right now it's winter. Anyway, I am going to fully focus on finishing this and I'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, so I've got some water for this thing called popping cooking. I've seen it quite a bit over the past few years and I've always been curious to see, you know, what it's all about. So in terms of the packaging, there's all these different powders that you would add to this and then you would make your popping sushi. Okay, the way to do this seems simple enough. I've made the rice, I've made the egg, I've made the tuna. Now I need to roll out the dry seaweed, which is this. The amount of sugar in this will probably counteract the amount of sodium I've ingested today. Having said that, I will not be finishing this at all. Although I am very, very, very curious about what the fish roe would taste like. So this is what it looks like. It has three different elements. There's the rice, there's the seaweed, and there's also the fish roe. The fish roe is like popping pearls. You bite into it and it's like sweet. The seaweed actually, actually tastes pretty good. It's like a grape sour chewy lolly. Yeah, so. That's 15 minutes of entertainment. If you've tried other ones, let me know which one's your favorite and whether they all taste the same. Everything on here pretty much tastes the same. They all taste like grape candy. Oh, I do want to take this opportunity. Give me a sec. I want to do an unboxing. So my friends at Sony sent me this gift a while ago and I was going to do an unboxing when I brought it out like to use. And this is actually a wireless speaker, an SRS XB13, and I was gonna bring it to like either the beach or go on a picnic and then use it, but I don't know when we'd be able to do that at the moment. So I'm gonna unbox it now. So these speakers, they last for up to 16 hours. They're dustproof and they are waterproof. Thank you again, Sony. I can't wait to submerge this in the water and see if I can still listen to music underwater.
Okay, so here's how I'm interpreting these instructions. So firstly, I would assume, number one, take out the packets and then pour in the hot water. All right, I am super excited to show you my dinner for tonight. Why am I wearing a hood indoors, you might ask? Because it is so, so cold. Okay, anyway, this is my noodles. When I was um, mixing it all together, I made some mistakes. Like the instructions were all in Japanese and I couldn't really understand it, but I figured it out. Um, essentially what you do is you peel it open, you take all the seasoning packets out of this and then you pour in hot water, let it steam for about three minutes. Um, afterwards, you peel open this thing and then they have these holes where you can just drain the water. It's one of the best invention ever. I also fried up some fried chicken as well that I got from Arisan. It's like a freezer pack that you can just either use in the air fryer or you can shallow fry. Anyway, I'm super excited to try this. These noodles actually taste really nice. Whoa, <laughs> just give me a sec. Let me, let me try this fried chicken. They actually come with a sauce as well. I just didn't make it. I think the fried chicken is better at Arisan than if I were trying to make it. We need an air fryer. Let's find an air fryer. We need an, a rice cooker and an air fryer. These noodles are actually, I'm quite um, pleasantly surprised. My sister is just standing out of frame. You can't see her, but she's waiting for her turn to eat. My turn. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's better. It's actually the chicken's better when I have it at Arisan. Where is Arisan? You've never heard of Arisan? No. So yeah, this whole day of eating instant noodles, some of the noodles didn't feel like instant noodles, especially the laksa one. The laksa one felt like it was like a decent meal. This one also tasted quite good as well. This one didn't really feel like instant noodles. If I had to rank them, it's probably the laksa, and then this one, and then the indomie, and then the, the two breakfast ones that I had. If you end up trying these, let me know what you think. And that is pretty much it for our instant noodle video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I post new videos every week. Check them out if you have time. I hope you have an amazing rest of the week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.